Okay, kids, it's the last video of the year. Try not to be too sad. Okay, this is from the pre-calculus materials. Um, and so uh, I had to try to, to, to try to make this more efficient. I had, had to cut some stuff out that we've already talked about in geometry. So if I cut out too much stuff and ends up making, not making sense, I apologize already. Okay, this is uh, about permutations and combinations, which is different ways to count things that are usually kind of hard to count. Uh, like this first one, like how many three-digit numbers can you make from these given starting digits? Actually, that one's not so hard, but they're going to get harder about ways you can count up crazy, like seemingly infinite sets of things. We need to make sure we know how many are in that, um, in, in that list of possibilities so we can compute probabilities. All right, so this is about making different um, numbers of, like different three-digit numbers out of these ingredients. And the first part is, well, if you can use each digit as much as you want, so numbers like 222 two, two, or 233, three, those would all be counted. You can, in other words, numbers can repeat. Then I've got five choices for the first one, five choices for the second one, and five choices for the third one. And that's a pretty big number. Uh, if you can't repeat any, which is what B is about, I've got five choices for the first number, but after I do that, just like picking cards out of a deck with no replacement, I've only got four choices for the next one and three choices for the next one. At least with only 60, which is quite a bit smaller. All right. In uh, this one, how many ways can we mail two letters into two? I'm going to get myself another page. I don't have enough room. Sorry. All right. Sorry if that's cheating, but I just have, didn't have room to draw this picture for you. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. What just happened there? Can I get back to reality? All right. Uh, how many ways can we put um, two letters in two mailboxes? Sorry, this looks like it's going off the page, too. Uh, fix that. All right, uh, two letters into two mailboxes. So what that means is um, we've got, can I draw now? All right, letters meaning like old-fashioned mailbox kind of letters. Uh, those two pieces of correspondence have to go to the into these two mailboxes. So it's like I have to decide where to put A and where to put B. I could put, and we could just write this assignment kind of this way. Uh, I could put A in one or I could put A in two. Just kind of draw a picture of what I mean. Or B could go into one, or B could go into two. In other words, both letters could go into the same box. They could go into opposite boxes. Uh, I don't even, I don't really know. But I have to make an assignment for where A goes, and I have to make an assignment for where B goes. How many choices do I have where to put A? I have two choices. How many choices where do I have to where I'm going to put B? I have two choices. So there's actually four for that one. This is for part A. Uh, two letters going into three boxes. Uh, well, if there's if I had a third box here, now A could also go here and B could also go here. Um, so there's going to be at least one box that's empty, but that doesn't really matter. So I'm, what I'm drawing here are blanks, and I'm labeling them. What am I going to do with A? What am I going to do with B? This first blank, how many choices do I have to where I'm going to put A? I have three choices where I'm going to put A, and I have three choices where I'm going to put B. So there's nine. Now, I didn't draw the sample space on this, other than you know I just drew these little arrows. But I'm going to have one of the arrows coming out of A and one of the arrows coming out of B. That's you know three choices for the first thing, three choices for the second thing. I didn't draw that sample space. It's kind of long and complicated. Uh, we're at the point now where you shouldn't have to draw the sample spaces, but you could if you needed to. All right, in part C, four letters into three mailboxes. So I'm, I guess I could just continue the same picture. So of course C could go any one of the three places, and D could go any one of the three places. I have to assign A, I have to assign B, I have to assign C, and I have to assign D. Each one of those things has three places it could go. So this is three to the fourth power, which I believe is 81. I have 81 choices for that. Okay, back to the page we were on. Uh, simplify the following. Oh, we haven't talked about this yet. We haven't talked about shouting variables. No, we haven't talked about this exclamation point, what that means. Uh, we kind of need that for what we're going to be doing. Uh, that means factorial. So when you see numbers like three factorial, and there's an exclamation point after it, that means start with that number and then multiply the successive natural numbers until you get down to one. So 3 factorial is 6. If you don't believe me, go to your calculator. You can type 3 exclamation point, you should get 6. Uh, how do you, how, where'd you get the exclamation point? I, I'm on a computer, so I'm kind of cheating. Um, you can get the exclamation point by doing this. Let's pick a bigger one, because bigger ones are more fun. 6, menu, hope you can see this menu. Oh, it's going to go off the screen. Uh, all right, so I believe you can get it in probability. You might be able to get it in, well, there it is. Probability factorial, first thing. There it is. So that was menu uh, 5, 1, if you want to know what that was. So yeah, 6 factorial is 720. That's 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And that's a very helpful way to count. Notice we did part of that right here. So that's kind of a hint. That's going to come back. In general, what's so we're going right into the algebra on this stuff. 
what's the, what's, how do you simplify n factorial divided by n minus 2 factorial? Okay, so what does that really mean? This is, starting with n, this is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. No, I'm not going to write them all out because I don't know how many they are. On down to 1 divided by n minus 2. What will be the next one in that factorial? It'll be n minus 3, etc. on down to 1. Well, there's an n minus 3 up here also. And you notice the rest of that stuff would all cancel out. So what I'm left with is just this. So really that wasn't so bad. We're going to have a lot of stuff like that where lots of things cancel. Think about this one. This is going to be n minus 3, or sorry, n plus 3 times n plus 2 times n plus 1 times n factorial, which will cancel with the bottom. So all I'm left, left with in that numerator is n plus 3 times n plus 2 times n plus 1 times n and on down. Well, n and on down is what I just have in the denominator, so I can, just, I can actually stop that right there. So these actually aren't so bad. Why are they giving us these crazy things to do? Well, just get ready. These are going to come up a lot, actually. n factorial over n times n minus 1. Uh, this is n times n minus 1 times a bunch more junk. And that bunch more junk is going to be there because the first two things are going to cancel. Maybe it would help if I wrote that. n times n minus 2, 1 times n minus 2 times a bunch of other stuff. And this is n times n minus 1. And that stuff will cancel. But I'm still going to have this n minus 2 times a bunch of other stuff. Well, that bunch of other stuff goes all the way down to 1. So really, the way to notate that would be like this. And no, I'm not proud of my answer. I'm not shouting, n minus 2. I'm saying, uh, no, it's n minus 2 factorial. OK, here's that work I already did. The 2a. All right, I don't know why these numbers go from 1 to 2 to 3 to 1. But we'll, uh, oh, wait, I already did. Oh, now I see. Just a second. You had plenty of room there. Sorry, I made my own room and then. I didn't need to make matters. So you have your own room on the rest of that page, so hopefully we'll figure that out moving forward. Okay, in general, this is what permutations are about. A permutation of a group of symbols is any arrangement of those symbols in a definite order. In other words, when we arrange, like when we were you know, putting the, the, the three-digit numbers in order, we cared about which order those digits were placed. Like 635 is different than 653. So since we want to count those differently, and there's times in real life when you count those the same, but when, we, when we're talking about um, leaving them in order, in a definite order, like that's what this is all about. If we care about the order, so in other words, this is like saying order matters. If order matters, then the way to count this is what we call permutation. For example, BAC is a permutation of the, the symbols A, B, and C. Um, and we say we're going to use all three of them. So it's the permutation, the way the language works is it's, the, it's a permutation, so it's an arrangement of uh, those three objects taken three at a time, or three elements taken three at a time. Um, so notice they, they get this list here. This is all the different permutations, and that's usually what we care about with permutations. We, we want to know how many permutations are there with that number of elements to choose from and that number of elements we want to use from that set. So here we're using three elements, A, B, and C, and in our, in our little arrangements, we're using all three of them. Sometimes we'll just use a subset, but this is using all three of them. Um, so it's permutations of three symbols taken three at a time. That's the whole list. There's only six. In this exercise, we're concerned with the listing of all of them and then learning how to count them without listing them all. Because, you know, they get pretty close to seeming like they're anything. Okay. If a chess association has 16 teams, uh, how many different ways could the top eight, eight positions be filled on the competition ladder. This means you have 16 teams competing at this tournament. And then, uh, this seems odd because chess to me doesn't seem like a team sport. Okay, we'll say you had 16 teams. How, how might the top eight look? Like if you had to rank the teams in order, how many different outcomes could this entire list of eight have? You know, you could think about the different teams um, called really fancy names like Team A and Team B and Team C and Team D on down to, I guess it'd probably be H. That might actually be the ordering, like first place, second place, third place, but it might be slightly different. It might be B, A, C, D, E, F, G, H, or it might be something crazy like C, B, D, A, F, E, G, H. Like it could be totally different. Like how many different ways could, could it end up with your like different unique lists of eight team, you know, first place through eighth place. That's kind of a crazy, huge number to think about. How many different ways could that be? Well, we do it like we've been doing cards and stuff all unit. How many how many teams could be assigned to first place at the beginning of this whole thing? Well, there's eight teams that could be first place. After we do that, how many teams could be second place? How many teams could be third place? 
etc. Guess what? This looks a lot like 8 factorial. Uh, what is that number? I don't want to do that in my head, but I will scream 8 at my calculator. 8! And it says 40,320, which is very fast. 40,320. There's 40,320 ways those top 8 positions could be done. Oh, you know what? I didn't do this right. Give me a second. Because, oh yeah, okay, I messed that up. Because how many choices is there for the first team? There's not eight. I was saying A through H are the first uh, eight teams. But there's some loser teams. And some of those loser teams might show up over here, you know, initial loser teams. Like, they might... Uh, JK, see, I was mess making a mistake. Uh, oh, wait, I had J up there already. I'm trying to be funny. Uh, but there, there's actually more than eight choices for the first thing. Okay, I totally messed that up. There's 16 choices out of the whole league here. We're just going to pick eight. We just care about eight. Okay. See, I knew it wasn't going to be that simple. Uh, this is for the fourth place team, for the uh, fifth place team, sixth place, seventh place, eighth place. So this is like a factor, but we stop because we only want to fill eight of the positions. Okay, I, I can do this on my calculator quickly, but I don't want to let the cat out of the bag just yet. Okay. Sorry about this. Okay, I haven't done this in a while. So first place, second place, third place. This is like picking the first eight cards out of a deck of 16, essentially. And we care about which order they're in. So um, there are actually 16 choices for the first place. After that, there's 15 choices for second place, etc. And those are all unique. So that's way bigger than 40,000. What was I talking about, 40,000? It's actually that number off the calculator. Again, I'm not going to tell you yet how I got that. Those of you who think you know how to do it, go ahead and try that. That's what it's supposed to be. Okay, suppose you have alphabet, this is probably a little smaller. Suppose you have alphabet blocks A, B, C, D, E. Oh, looks like my chess team names. And they're placed in a row. For example, you could have this. How many different permutations? In other words, how many different orderings of that could you have? Well, this is actually a lot easier than the last problem. Uh, part A, we could have, uh, we have five choices for the first thing, etc. cetera. Uh, that's 120. Of those, how many of those end in C? Well, if we're going to end this in C, how many choices do we have for the first letter? Well, we only have four choices for the first letter, if you think about it, um, because the because C is reserved for the ending spot. So C kind of has to be there in the fifth spot. Uh, and then after if we put C in the fifth spot, there's really only four choices that the first thing can be. And then we only have this many choices for the other stuff. Uh, and that's going to be, what is that, 24? Quite a bit fewer, because we restricted. We can't let the C float around. How many permutations have those two places nailed down? So in the second spot, there's only one choice, and in the fourth spot, there's only one choice. What's left to be to be different after that? Well, after I've locked in the A and the B, this first spot only has three choices for what it can be. It's B, um, C, D, or E. And then after I do that, there's only two choices for this middle spot, and then there's only one choice for the end. So there's only six left around those two. It's almost like we just took two out of the pool, and we're just going to see how many per permutations are of the other three things. Uh, how many begin and end with a vowel? Ending, beginning with A or E at the beginning or end. Okay, gosh. Let's try to do this. Let's do um, begin A. Well, I don't have to write all that. We're going to want, like begin with A and end with E. So the ones that go A, blank, 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 E. Uh, or they would begin with E and end with A. Well, that kind of pins down one choice at beginning and end. But in both these cases, we'll have three choices, two choices, one choice in the middle. So we'll have six that look like that and six that look like that. And we're saying or, and these are mutually exclusive. We can add those, and we're going to get 12. Doing OK so far? You don't have to talk to your computer. I can't hear you. OK, so summary on permutations. Uh, permutation is a group of symbols in any arrangement of those symbols in a definite order. In other words, the order matches. OK, here's the symbol for permutation. It means. Um, we're going to take, if, we're going to, if we do the number of permutations of n different objects, it's n factorial. So we want to use all the things in a set. Like back here, we took all five of these blocks. And we're going to arrange all five of the blocks in the order of all five blocks. It's going to be 5 factorial, which is what we just saw there. One way to write that is n factorial. Another way is npn, and I will describe that in video part two.